Hi, so today what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate uh, a credit scoring exercise using R and a GUI called Rattle on top of it, which will remove all requirements of actually coding on R. Now, this is a fairly popular data set which I've got open. We've got the variables over here and we've got about, they say about a thousand observations over here. If you watch this particular variable, you'll see some of them are ones while some of them have been marked off as zeros. And then we've got a whole lot of variables like balance, credit, duration, etc, etc. It's a German data set. Therefore, we've got the variable description tab over here which tells us what these variables actually mean or the data understanding part. For example, this is the de dependent variable or the target variable which we need to model. Which of these particular loan applicants were good and which went bad? Then we've got information about each of these uh, applicants. What is the balance of the credit account? How much did they have? How long the, the loan was being taken for? What was the purpose of the loan? How much is the amount? What was the age of the, the subscriber, etc.? What is the occupation, whether the person is a foreign or not, etc., etc.? So the objective of this particular exercise is that this is all the information which a bank or any particular credit ex company would ask a subscriber before they go ahead and give the person a loan or not. Now the objective of this is to build a predictive model into which we will feed all of this information and the model is going to predict whether the person is going to repay the loan or not. And we've got this past data of the subscribers or these let's say uh, creditors who had taken the loan and the bank or this particular exercise have tracked which loans went good, which loans went bad. One specifies a good, zero specifies a bad. So the first step that we need to do is we need to import this data set into R. So I'm going to launch R over here. I've got the desktop icon over here. I've installed the 64-bit edition. And this is what the R window looks like. Right Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a library called Rattle. To know how to install R and Rattle, Please refer to our blog again at www.learnanalytics.in and we'll show you how do you go about installing this. To launch the library rattle, I simply type in library bracket rattle and then rattle open close. That is the only piece of R coding I'm going to do today in this full exercise. And what this is going to do, this is going to launch a GUI like this. Right? So this particular GUI is going to remove all the requirement for me to do any coding on R whatsoever. Right? Now this follows the typical crisp DM methodology, the data import part, then exploration, testing, transforming the data set, then doing the modeling, evaluating the modeling, etc. And then finally it's got a log window which shows all the R commands in case you want to look at the syntax as well. So today we're not going to look at the syntax at all. I'm simply going to demonstrate how do we use Rattle on top of R to build a predictive model. Now remember that R is free and so is Rattle. So if you want to install this on your computer, you can go ahead and do it. Right? It can do everything with SAS can and some things more at absolutely no cost. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import this data set. So I'm already on the data tab. I'll click on this particular button file name. Now this gives me an option what kind of files I want to import. So I can start off from, let's see, I've got I can import a CSV file, I can import a text file, I can import Excel files, I can import Excel 2007 files as well. So for simplicity sake, I'm restricting today to CSV files. So I'm going to import credit.csv and I press the execute button. Right? And I can see all the variable names have come over here. Right? Now I can import, I've imported as a spreadsheet, but I can also import through an ODBC connection, connect to a MySQL or an SQL server database and pull it out from there or from an already defined R data set, etc. So today we've imported it from a CSV file itself. Now what we see over here is that we've got all of the variables against each of the variables of the data type. So what kind of data type have they been imported as? For example, in this particular data set, all variables were numbers. There were no characters, so they've all been imported as a numeric data type. Against each of them, I've got the role. So what are these variables? Input means they are supposed to be used as independent variables or inputs to the model. 
target variable would refer to which variables properties or which variable are we trying to model or which variables variance are we trying to model over here so by default it has given the target to gustav now the gustav variable as we know is whether it's a binary variable coded off as 1 and 2 whether it's a foreign worker or not now this is not the target variable our target variable is the credit variable over here one says this loan is good zero says this loan is bad so i go over here i change credit from input to target and i change gustav from target to input right now this particular option over here which says partition now this is a very interesting uh, option over here this allows me to partition my data set into multiple paths up to three different paths randomly why do we partition a data set so that we can build our model on one part and test out the predictive power of the variable on a different sample so we are going to use a random sample comprising of 70% of the data set to build the model 30% of the data set is going to be used for testing out the model so i'm creating only two samples over here so i don't need to create a third sample so 70 plus 30 is 100 so therefore i give zero as the third sample over here to get to know what each of these options do you can just hover the mouse over there and a tool tip will come over there right now since i've changed a few things over here i'll press the execute button over here once i do this at the end you can see it says roles noted 1000 observations 20 input variables target is credit classification models enabled right before i do that i want to do a little bit of exploration on this data set so i'm going to demonstrate a few of the graphical capabilities of r and rattle therein so if i go to the explore tab and i check out the distributions over here right now I'm going to use a thing, something called as the box plot. It's a very interesting uh, graphical technique to check the distribution and the central uh, limit of a variable. So I'm going to check it for duration. So I click duration box plot and I press execute now. Now this shows up a very, very interesting graph over here. Right? It says for all, this is the duration uh, box and whiskers uh, plot over here. So I can see that the median lies just under 20 so duration is in months so i say about eight, 17 or 18 months is the median duration for all then for the zeros and ones because our target variable was credit so it has split this particular box plot into zeros and ones separately i can see that zeros has a much higher median duration as compared to all and also took as compared to one so i see ones have a much lower median and zeros have a much higher median and i know zeros as per the data definitions are the bad loans ones are the good loans so i can see using a simple box and whiskers plot over here that as the duration increases right the probability of being of a loan going bad also increases i can see for all the loans who have defaulted the duration was much higher as compared to the loans which did not default so I can see that the median default uh, duration is much higher than the median non-default duration. So this is how I can see which whether duration is going to have a significant impact on the probability of, let's say, defaulting or not. So this was duration. Let me try out another variable over here, which is the amount. So H-O-E-H-A-H-O-E, this gives us the amount of credit in Deutschmarks. So I'm going to use this whole variable and check whether this has an impact on probability of default or not. I press a box, box and vistas again, press execute and there I get. Right. So I see that this is the uh, the amount for all, amount for the zeros and amounts for ones alone. I can see that even though the median does not show too much of a difference, the variance in zeros is much higher as the variance compared to one. So Maybe this is significant, maybe this is not significant, but the variance of the variable OHE or the amount of loan is much higher for people who default as compared to people who do not default. Right? Let's try out whether age has an impact on uh, this or not. So alter variable. Right? Does the age of the applicant have an impact or not? So again, go and press execute over here. Let's have a look. Right, median age of all the people who are taking or are applying for the loan is between 30 and let's say about 30, 33 or 34. For people who did default, it is significantly lower. For one people who did not default, it is about the same as the, the population that we are considering. So I can see it's very evident that 
younger people are more likely to default on a loan as compared to the older people. So if you see over here, the median age of all the people who defaulted on the loan is much lower than 30 and the people who actually paid back the loan, the median age is actually closer to 35 than it is as compared to the other. Right? So this gives us a very, very important uh, exploratory platform to explore the impact of variables on our dependent variables. Also, I can look at the histogram of the variables as well. Let's check out this option called histogram. Press execute and I get the histogram of the age distribution as well. So I get the histogram of all the observations. Then uh, it's joined by the pink line gives us all, green line gives us zeros, blue line gives us specifically for ones. So you can go about doing a lot of variable exploration in the explore tab. You can try out correlations, principal components, etc. So this is what the, the explore tab does. Then we have the transform tab, whether you want to do some missing value treatment, you want to impute, you want to do recoding, you want to do cleanup, etc. So we're going to skip this tab for now. Our data is already clean. What I'm more interested is in the model tab. So what do we have in the model tab? So we have all the popular predictive modeling techniques which are already enabled in Rattle. So I can go with a classic decision tree using a ID3C4. It is comparable to CART. Right? This particular algorithm is quite close to what uh, any particular CART implementation is going to be like. Then we have got the random forest implementation, which is, which is a very new technique uh, comparatively and there is no technique for this implemented in SAS as of now. Again boosting, again adaptive boosting, no technique in SAS as of now unless you write your own boosting algorithm in SAS. Support vector machines, linear regression again, linear regression using the logistic link functions or classic logistic regression exercise over here, and neural networks as well. So I can build any particular model that I want. Let's say I built a decision tree over here, and I draw it out. So typically, this is how a decision tree looks like. So I get a very big tree. I want to simplify this tree. I go back to Rattle, and I can change. Let's say minimum split is about 40, and minimum bucket is about 20. I press execute, I get a much smaller tree. So depending on what the stopping and starting condition I want to figure out, Rattle gives me the power to do that without writing any particular code over here. Supposing I want to click on all over here, so what this all button is going to do, it's going to create all the models on the line over here. So I get the option building adaptive model, building random forest model at the bottom. So building a support vector machine now building linear model, building neural network model. So I have a very fast computer and it's a small instructional data set. So all models have been generated in 12 seconds. But typically if you have a very large data set, so it's not uncommon for, you know, the modeling process to take up to a couple of hours even. In some cases when I've been working on Kaggle data sets, it's taken me over six hours to build a model. So don't be disheartened. Let your modeling technique run for as long as you have, provided you have enough RAM. Now that I've created all of these models, how do I go about evaluating each of these models? Right? So I go to the evaluate option. So it gives me all of these options which can be used to evaluate a model. Since I know this is a binary classification exercise, either the loan is good or bad, one of the best methodologies for checking out the predictive power of a binary model is to generate the ROC curve and look at the area under the curve. So I click on ROC over here. By default, it's going to generate the ROC for the validation data set. If you look over here, it's clicked on validation data set. So I'm go, I just press execute over here. And it's loading on the packages automatically. It's generating this. So I get this very nice looking graph, which is typically the ROC curve. So if I look at this, this is the ROC curve for the validation data set. I'll just close the others. And it says this red line is the R part. R part is the ROC curve for the decision tree. This dotted yellow line is for the ADA or the adaptive boosting. Then I've got random forest support vector machine, general linear model, which is my logistic regression exercise, and then the neural network exercise as well. So what I do over here is I get the area under the curve. So I see that area under the curve for the R part of the decision tree on the validation data set is 0.73. For adaptive boosting, it's 0 0.80. For random forest, it's about 81. Again, support vector machine is 81 again. And GLM or logistic regression is giving me about 80. And neural network was not able to create a model, so I get a random model which is giving me an ROC of 0.5 itself. So I see the best models that I'm getting is adaptive boosting, random forest, 
support vector machine is also doing well and glmr is also doing well the standalone decision tree is performing subst substantially below par as compared to the other models so what i could possibly do is i could ensemble all of these four models together and get a singular model by taking the average of all of them and probably generating a much better model than each of these alone more on ensembling later so this is what we've done today we've done a data uh, modeling exercise and we've tested out on the validation if i want to test the roc on training as well i can execute this it will give me a warning message it says that you're using the training data set to evaluate your model this will give you an optimistic estimate and as i can see that the roc curves for training are much much more extreme as compared to for the validation which is expected because i'm using the uh, machine learning algorithms over here like for example ad is giving me an almost perfect model so is random forest and uh, glm does not show any uh, any uh, overfit in validation if you remember i got about 0.80 and in training i'm getting 0.79 so no evidence of an overfit over here some of you might be asking how do we do a step wise in uh, rattle or in r now step wise is a implementation in sas alone there is no procedure to do step wise automatically in r unless you write it on your own and rattle does not provide a step wise that said step wise is overrated as i always believe you should not be using step wise but if you want to ignore a variable in the modeling process you can go to the data tab let's say i don't want to use verb variable i can press ignore press ex execute and then again go to the model tab and create all of the models again so what we did over here is we started off with the data tab imported a data set we went to the explore options looked at a few box plots for the variables by the target variable which i had specified as credit went to the model tab ran all of these models automatically went to the evaluate tab checked out the roc of all of these models pressed execute and i got the rocs for both training and validation so i can see which model is better and then i can go ahead and deploy these particular models now how do we go about deploying models on rattle etc i'll show it to you in another training video and uh, i would very much like your feedback and how did whether this uh, training video helped you expand your horizon on r or on rattle and for those of you who were able to understand much of this um you would never be